The BRIC summit concluded yesterday in Santon. The outcomes of the summit were announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa. He said closing talks between states focused on accelerated growth and sustainable development, as well as the peaceful resolution of global conflicts. The president also announced six more countries have been granted permission to join BRICS. These countries are Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. To unpack this, the Human Sciences Research Council State Divisional Head, Nania Bolo Muller, joins me now. Thank you so much, Nania, for speaking to us on SA tonight this evening. Um, so you've been at the summit uh, attending for the past three days. What did you make overall of the discussions um, and some of the things that were perhaps not said? Sorry, I've lost. Oh, goodness. Can you hear me now? Um, I can hear you now. Sorry, I lost you for a moment there. No, that's all good. We know internet um, connections do. <laughs> they do sometimes play havoc with us. So I was asking about your observations over the past three days of the summit, of the discussions that were held, and perhaps some of the things that you felt were lacking. Well, I think it was very entertaining. Um, Johannesburg and Santon put its best foot forward. Um, I think that uh, South Africa put its best foot forward generally. And um, so the atmosphere was good. It was collegial, um, collaborative, exactly what the president asked for in his family meeting on Sunday. Um, but obviously, the, behind closed doors, it wasn't that jovial and congenial all of the time. Um, and some of that tension, you know, was, was uh, seeping out um, now and again. Um, as uh, commentators were telling of their own experiences um, whilst at the International Convention Center. But all in all, I think that uh, President Ramaphosa has done very well. Um, and you can see the optics there, yes. Uh, he's a brilliant negotiator, and he proved that uh, during the constitutional negotiations that he led um, for our own constitution in the early 1990s. And he's shown again that he's very adept at uh, diplomacy and at building relations. So diplomacy, uh, you know, as you mentioned, that that becomes a key focus of the uh, countries now being admitted to BRICS+. Plus. Uh, we're looking at, you know, the dangers and the possibilities for South Africa, um, given the inclusion of oil producing countries and perhaps, um, you know, some criticism around our foreign policy stance? Well, our foreign policy stance has been changing over the last 30 years. It's, it's never been stagnant. It's been different and under all of the presidents that we've had it started as human rights, um, a beacon of shining light, under, um, obviously under President Mandela. Um, it became the African Renaissance um, under President Thabo Mbeki. It was President Zuma who started pushing the BRICS angle. And now uh, President Ramaphosa is taking it a little bit further. Um, the, we belong to many multilateral organizations. So this one is important. Um, the summit was very important, but it's not all that's important. Um, I think uh, there are pros and cons um, for South Africa here. The pro is that it could very well improve trade and investment. It could um, Im help us with our serious problems of poverty, inequality, and unemployment by allowing us to trade more easily, even in our own currency, um, with uh, members within the BRICS and now the expanded BRICS or BRICS Plus, because nobody could, can think of an acronym for the 11 countries. Um, there's some issues, I suppose, that we do need to consider as we go forward, and that is um, the BRICS stance on, on energy. Um, that's a big one, you know, energy security. Uh, China has made some promises to us. It looks as though they're going to snap their fingers and load shedding will be at an end. Um, so we have to keep an eye on that. Um, the BRICS stance on climate change. Um, is there going to be any form of consensus there um, at the next COP? And then uh, gender equality, which not much has been said. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a mixed bag, but mainly I think it's an economic win. In terms of the inclusion of Iran in the bloc, um, not to single out Iran, but I suppose um, 
you know, the question around the humanitarian record of various of the members of BRICS, BRICS current members, new members, having mixed records of upholding uh, civic freedoms enshrined in the international human rights uh, framework. Is that fair criticism or, or are we putting too much of a spotlight on that? I think it's fair criticism, but simultaneously there's also a, a, something called uh, national sovereignty. So um, there's going to be no interference in a country's um, internal politics uh, when it comes to BRICS because that's one of the principles of international relations. Um, and South Africa, I mean, President Ramaphosa did talk about the international uh, rule of law, and that international rule of law is going nowhere. So any multilateral organization must exist within those international rules, the treaties, the human rights obligations, etc. But we do have some countries now um, in the past and who have joined um, who don't have very good records, makes one feel a little bit uncomfortable but diversity is uh, something that we have to live with, that we have to become accustomed to. So the interesting just little number crunching was that we now have um, six democracies in the group. We have four autocracies slash authoritarian countries in the group and one theocracy. So we're still um, in the majority as a democratic country. Moving on to the possible inclusion of Zimbabwe, they have requested an invitation to join BRICS+. Plus. There are, however, currently serious uh, questions around the credibility, the transparency of the uh, elections um, on the go there. What are some of the considerations you know, for you? Well, we don't have criteria. Um, so, yes, I can give my personal opinion, but I have not seen any criteria um, to show how one includes members of BRICS. I think it will only happen once a year during the summit. I don't think that all of a sudden they're going to make a statement next week to say that Zimbabwe is a member. Um, but BRICS isn't going to accept countries such as Zimbabwe because the political instability in the country is not going to do it any good. Um, and, and one of the requirements was, in fact, um, political stability, if not um, internal uh, stability, at least stability in the region or being a leader in the region. So a country like Zimbabwe has very little chance of joining BRICS. It would benefit a lot from it, but it goes both ways. Well, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, we look forward to seeing uh, some of the decisions and the discussions taking place at BRICS, uh, moving on into action and concrete benefits for uh, especially the people of Africa, um, as Africa has been a big focus of this BRICS, uh, among other things with the President Ramaphosa saying it's about time that Africa is able to um, you know, make better use of the minerals mined here. Uh, we, we do thank you for your time and for your insights. That was Nalia uh, Bola Muller, State Divisional Head of the Human Sciences Research Council.